All right, how are you everybody? We're about to start lesson number six and I think I'm getting into a little bit of a feel for this course and for how to best structure these videos. So I'm feeling really comfortable presenting them and I hope that um, they're, uh, you're receiving them in a way that you're getting a lot out of them as well. All right, um, so I chose this picture of my wife and one of our dogs, Ziva, the Miss Lovely Ziva, um, because in photography, perspective is everything. I could take this picture with a, a wide-angle lens and my wife would look even tinier. Ziva is a pretty big dog. She weighs 117 pounds. Or I could focus in with a zoom lens and then Ziva would not look so big compared to my wife. So perspective and photography based on the lens can change drastically. And that's what we're attempting to do with statistics is we're trying to give perspective to what's going on, or at least it's one of the roles with um, uh, statistics. So without any further ado, let's go over some of the kinds of questions that you had on your homework the other day. Um, I looked over the homework, it seemed to look pretty good, but I wanna reinforce it by doing some new questions that are like the homework questions you did the other day. So um, here are, um, some, I, I believe these are the exact questions that you went over the other day. And what I'm going to do at this point, I, I think I just, yeah, I went in and I changed some of these numbers. So I set you up with some intervals. One of the things that I did see that kids did wrong with the intervals the other day, not necessarily wrong, but could have been a little cleaner about, is they did do intervals of length 50. Um, that was true, but they didn't always start at 50. Sometimes they started at 20 or 30 or 70. So I think while you don't necessarily have to start at 50, I think it's the cleanest place to start. 50 to 100, 100 to 150, 150 to 200. It just sounds clean. So um, the first thing we have to do is put in the real limits. And when we talked about real limits, we always want to go one decimal place past the decimal places given in the interval. So for instance, in this first one here, it's 300 to 349, go one decimal place past and go down by a half, so 299.5, and up by a half at the upper end, so 349 and a half. At the lower end of the next interval, go down by a half, 249.5, and up by a half, 299.5. So that's how we get our real limits. Now what we're gonna do is some stop and start, and you're going to fill in the frequency, just the frequency, go ahead. Okay, so we're done filling in the frequency, and this is what we get. Remember, when you're doing the frequency, you might wanna make tally marks in the box or on a separate piece of paper for as you go along. You remember that great song in Beetlejuice? Hey, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Daylight, come and me wanna go home. So what we're trying to do here is figure out how many of the scores up here in the white box in the blue rectangle or rounded rectangle how many of those scores are between 300 and 349? There are two. Between 250 and 299, there's one. Eight are between 200 and 249. Six between 150 and 199. Two between 140, uh, 100 and 149. And five are between 50 and 99. Now, the next column is what we call the proportion column, okay? And we want you to express that both as a fraction and as a decimal. A decimal because it'll be really easy to convert to the next column which is a percent so we're going to do a little stop and start fill in the p column p for proportion i was now you can talk i paused it oh, oh no. Okay. no i'm doing a video oh okay okay i'm gonna lie down for a little bit Bob. Okay. okay i'll be in it after the video and i'll do the okay. thing to you Okay, so that was just my wife. She um, poked her nose in the room to see what's going on. She thought I was talking to, the, to a ghost. All right, next up, the proportion column. So all you do is you figure out the total frequency, and if you add up those total frequencies, there's 24. And by the way, I always add up the total frequencies and make sure it matches the number in the table, and this is eight rows by three deep, so that's 24. And if I add up two, one, eight, that's 11. 6 is 17, 2 is 19, and 5 is 24. So when they both come out to 24, it is highly likely that you did it correctly. 
And now for the proportion column, you just take how many are in the frequency out of the total. Um, so 2 out of 24, 1 out of 24, 8 out of 24, 6 out of 24, 2 out of 24, and 5 out of 24. And then I convert them to decimals just by dividing on the calculator. 2 divided by 24 equals 1 divided by 24 equals, and so on. So now the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to convert to a percent. Okay, let's take a look at that. Remember, to convert to a percent, percent has an R in it, we move two places to the right. So it was 0 0.083, moving two to the right, boom, boom, 8.3%. For 0.2%, again, moving two to the right, 33.3%, 25%, and so on for the rest of the table. Now, as far as the cumulative frequency goes, this is very easy, but a couple of things to bear in mind. Cumulative means to accumulate, which means to build as you go along. Um, so you're going to add up the frequencies as you go along. But it's extremely important to start down here in the bottom right corner because that's where the scores are lowest, and we have to build from there. So here are the cumulative. Well, actually, I'll give you a chance to do the cumulative frequencies, then I'll show you the score. Go ahead. Okay. So you have five between 50 and 99. Then you have two more here, so that makes a total of seven. Six more here makes a total of 13. Eight more, add it up, 21. One more, 22. Two more, 24. And that's your cumulative frequency. So that is a frequency table, and that's how you construct it from beginning to end. On the next quiz, I am going to be sure to put some kind of a frequency um, table in there and ask some multiple choice questions based on that table. Okay, so next work to do is some review of summation symbols. So we're going to do stop and start and I'm going to have you do, let's see you work on numbers one, two, and three. Just numbers one, two, and three. Do those, we'll go over them and then we'll do four, five, and six. Okay, so number one just says find the sum of the x's. That's what summation means. Greek letter sigma, short for summation, the s at the beginning. So you're going to add up all the x's. Sum means to add. So 7, 9, 11, and 8, you add them up and you get 35. Now it says find the sum of the x squareds. And we have to follow a uh, statistical order of operations, which means we need to square these things first. And 7 squared is 49. 9 squared is 81, 11 squared 121, 8 squared 64. I add them all up and I get 315. Okay, now for number three. Number three is very important. A lot of people on their homework, not a lot, but some people on their homework, would do 7 plus 5 and their first number would be 12. 9 and 5 and their first number would be 14, or their next number would be 14, 11 and 5, 16, and so on. That is not what this says. This says take the sum of x here, which is the same thing as up here. So just take the result of the sum of x's, which is 35, and then add 5. 35 plus 5 is 40. If I wanted to do what I was talking about earlier, where I add 5 to each term, I have to put that in parentheses. Okay? When they're not in parentheses, then the last thing you always do is any addition or subtractions. Okay, so that would be 35 plus 5. So that should help you with number 4. Now I'd like to see you do numbers 4 and 5 only. Don't do 6. Go ahead. Okay, so the sum of the x squareds is 315. So that's what this says, and it's not in parentheses, so don't go subtracting 2 yet. The sum of the x squareds is 315. Then I subtract 2, and I get 313. How do you interpret number 5? The correct way to interpret this, there's no parentheses here, so I'm not going to add 7 to the x's. This means 3 times whatever the value for the sum of x is, and then add 7. But we already said the sum of the x's is 35, so this means... 3 times 35 
plus 7. And 3 times 35 is 105. And then we add 7 to get 112. Try the last one, number 6. Okay. So, um, I got to look up the sum of the x squared column, which is 315. And I do 5 times... Oh. If the sum of the x squared is 315 and I do 5 times 315, I don't know why I put 291 here. Uh-oh. I have an I have an apology. Maybe it still works out the same. I think it does. Let me just do a quick check here. No. The correct answer to this one should be 1573. So um, I took this from a previous slide and I forgot to change what was going on here. I apologize. It should be five times the sum of the x squareds, which is 315. So this 291 should say, should say 315 and then minus the two. And the total for that is 1573. Okay. I do apologize. All right. I'm going to stop now. We've gotten through summations and a frequency table. And then I'm going to go through building a box plot.